Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Iron Icon where we go around the ecosystem and talk to our builders. And with us today, we have the two Andrews, but now the one's called Andy and one's called Andrew, just so that we can tell them apart, especially because both the cameras aren't on either. So welcome to the show, guys. Uh, Andy, how are you today? I'm good. Thank you, Fez. Very happy to be here. Honored, Excellent. honored, honored actually to be here. <laughs> ah, that's, that's uh, the honor is mine to have you on the show. And um, Andrew, your camera came on for a second and then you got shy. How are you? Yeah, good, mate. Sorry, I meant to press the mute button instead of the camera. But hello, how you going? <laughs> good, good. Okay, if, if you didn't, if everyone didn't know who Andrew was, you know, he's a dev for um, metrics and a few other things, has his hand in many, many things. But, um, and Andy, Andy, you, you've recently joined Frame, haven't you? Yes, um, I think three three weeks ago. Oh wow! Yeah, very very recently. Yeah, I think that's okay. And what 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 do you do for Frame? Um, so um, I've worked on the token model. I work in comms basically. Mm -hmm. um, I'm writing most of the community content that we're sharing uh, on Medium, on uh, Twitter. Uh, you know, general support, community management as well on Discord. So you know, I have my hands full. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sounds sounds it. Okay, and Andrew, before I get to you, in, in case anyone hasn't noticed yet, um, this is a conversation about Frame. We've seen Frame um, running all kinds of competitions at the moment. They've been revving up their Yeti Strong collection that is about to drop on the twenty seventh of May, and we've seen them. That that date is correct, right? Twenty seventh of May. That's yes. correct, yeah. Excellent. And we've seen them release their white paper, which contains a ton of information. So um, perfect time to have them on the show. I kind of want to drill down into the white paper and, and break it down and make sure everyone's very clear on what they're doing, and um, especially because the technomics are just different from everything that's out there. But before we do that, Andrew, how you been? It's, it's been a while. I haven't had you I haven't, on the show. I haven't spoken no. to you privately. I just, yeah, I just miss you, man. Yeah, I miss you too, man. No, we've, we've both been um, going our own parallel paths for the last four or five months. Mm. Um, still keeping relative um, same distance from each other, but not straying too far away. But I'm still here. You're still there. I haven't gone anywhere. Good, good. No, uh, well, we are still here, but uh, look, I think paths are crossing back again and a lot more work to be done I together. See, I can see the, the jacket you're wearing. Good, good stuff. Represent. Represent. Yeah, I got it. Oh, see, it's backwards. I got it as a present. Thank you. Um, okay, okay. So let's dive right in. Okay, so the first thing, uh, well, in case people didn't know, I wanted to do some quick questions i don't want to spend too much time here because i want the majority of this time spent on the white paper yeah. uh, so first of all a quick overview of how frame came to be who wants who wants to tackle that i can do that i think so we started in august under a different name we started under a name of crypto world portraits which was just the name of a collection that we started with um, on OpenSea, and that got uh, a bit of traction with a lot of people within the Polygon network that we're friends with. So that that was that was pretty good. And then we, yeah, the biggest break that we got was um, a partner partnership deal with TCG World, uh, which is a metaverse um, that's been developed on the Binance smart chain. And that was a collection of ten thousand dragons that got sold out within a few days. I think they've made about eight hundred Ethereum. Unfortunately, I don't. I don't get any of that. We <laughs> we we got paid um, as a commission job up, up front, but they've done really well. I'm really proud of them. Um, and more recently, we we rebranded re to Framed, um, and uh, we we wanted to, I guess, do more than just collections. We want Framed to be more of a community, more of a entire. Uh, collection of collections across different partners and different projects as well. So yeah, that's kind of how we've been. We we've ramped up since Andy's come on board in the last three weeks. We've been nonstop building. I'm really excited about the next six to seven months. Okay. Yeah. No. No. Same. I've definitely noticed ramp up. But that's good to get a bit of history there because uh, way I understand it as well. Some of the you, you had some collaborations I, I recall for a little while you were doing um a whale series around the cricket stars and a lot of um cricketers were buying these nfts is that true 
Um, yeah, we, we tried to get into the obviously the Polygon network. Um, the founder is, is from India and Indians are very, very much loving their cricket. Um, so we kind of did a series around cricket in Wales and it didn't go really as, as good as we expected, but, I mean, that's okay. Not, a, not all projects can be successful. So we, we regrouped and then we, we came out with uh, Gangster Wales. That's um, a little bit of fun when Gangster Bet kind of released. Um, so we released about 30 of those and that was a fun mm-hmm. thing to do. Um, yeah. It's insane. Yeah. Sorry, we so no, no. So okay, yep. So that um, that got released on Craft, and I've noticed uh, Framed have done a few other uh, collections as well. Uh, do you know them off the top of your head? So the one uh, Wonderland. There was a Wonderland series. Yeah, that, oh, that's yeah. Um, that's still going on, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. I forgot. I don't know why I forgot that. Yeah. So that's a collection of ten. Yeah. Um, there is a surprise that is coming once we mint the ten. Once we finish the ten, uh, we won't say too much about that. But I will say one of the ten will be a um, super collection, um, and we have announced a partnership with Wonder Wonder Game. Yeah. So stay stay tuned on on that. Mm. Cool. Okay. So. Then that that's good. I, I want a quick. So there is a backlog. There is, um, you know, you're not just releasing the Yeti Strong as a, a first collection. You've done quite a series, successful. Um, I, from what I recall, I remember a celebrity bought one of your NFTs as well. Um, so uh, you've definitely taken a lot of um, learnings from everything, and you've kind of put a lot of effort into the Yeti Strong collection. So before we touch on that. But the final question I have around Frame. So, based on this, as you've rebranded, what is your goal? What is Frame's goal? What's its purpose for existing? What I what I found after doing this for almost a year now is you're nothing without a good community behind you. You you could be the greatest artist in the world, but if you don't have that following, that community spirit behind you, um, supporting you, then you're really not going to get much sales. You're not going to get that much support. So what I've found is community is number one. If you don't have a good community behind you, then no matter how good your project's going to be, it might it might fail. It might not, but there's a strong chance that it will. And so that's what I've learned. And that's kind of why we like we, we named Framed Framed because it frames pictures, it frames communities and brings it together. Yeah. Okay, cool. Great. Um, okay, well, look, now let's let's dive into the, the white paper. So you've released the white paper. There's a ton of information in there. So uh, I, I wanted to, I thought, let's kick off with what's different is obviously you have your own tokenomics around the framed ecosystem and anything associated to the framed ecosystem. So I thought let's start a little bit differently and and talk through Distribution. So how is the frame token being distributed? And then we'll come into, you know, I want to talk about once the distributing model's in place, then I want to talk about the holders. So what's in it with the distributors who are getting it? What's in it for them? Why should they hold? So just give me a bit more context there. So coming back, distribution, how will frame be distributed to everyone? Yeah, um, I'll take that one. So... um... Initially, we're going to have a framed reserve of 32 million. Mm -hmm. And then the distribution will primarily happen when um, users mint NFTs. And it's going to happen according to a ratio, uh, proportional to the amount of ICX spent on the NFT itself. So for example, for the Yeti Strong Club, uh, the distribution ratio is 1.5 frame tokens per, per ICX. So each Yeti, the mint price will be 100 ICX. Mm -hmm. Each Yeti will earn basically 150 frame tokens uh, once minted. Yep. Okay. Uh, All all other future framed collections will, uh, the distribution ratio will be 1.25 framed per ICX. The reason we went for this is because uh, the Yeti Strong Club is framed's, you know, first inaugural collection, if you will, 10K collection on, on, uh, on the Icon Network. And I wanted to make it special. So it's going to earn more frame tokens than any other future collection. And it is also going to earn passive income. 
So every ETH you once minted will earn one frame token per day for a duration of one year. In addition to that, it's it's called Yeti Strong, Strong Club. So it's a club concept. By by being part of the club, you are also entitled to certain privileges and advantages. And uh, those might be, you know, guaranteed whitelists in the future, for example, discounts on future collections, things of the sort. So you're going to want to have a Yeti because it is going to give you an advantage on all future framed uh, collections, not just the, the frame tokens that it's going to uh, earn you as, as a mentor. Um, that's the primary mode of distribution. And then you you also have, uh, you know, we, we're very big on partnerships and we really like to partner with other uh, NFTs, NFT projects and communities. So partner projects who also do, uh, you know, work with us, will, also, they, will they, their collections will also earn um, frame tokens. The distribution ratio is 0 0.75 framed per ICX, but that, that is not, uh, you know, finalized. That is something that will also depend on the partner collection itself. So if it's a huge collection or if it's a very small collection, these things will differ and will be agreed with the teams once we, you know, once we work together. Okay. And so that's uh, on minting aspect. So yeah, yeah uh, anything that Frame does in-house or you partner with. What about, because uh, I saw in the white paper there was node voting. So Correct. is it part of the distribution? Yes. What sort of, yeah. Correct. So the primary mode of distribution is through the minting. We're also going to be incentivizing voters because the token model is uh, based on a treasury system. And it's also, it's, it's a protocol on liquidity model. And to do that, we are uh, repurposing the node rewards. So we're going to be running a node. First of all, it benefits the Icon network, you know, uh, adds to decentralization, security uh, and whatnot. And those node rewards are what we're going to use to um, fund the treasury for the framed, uh, you know, token economy. And we're going to use the node rewards as well to um, create this protocol on liquidity that builds value over time. So to incentivize people to work, uh, to vote for the frame node, they will also be getting uh, frame tokens. We have uh, set aside for that 3.2 million frame tokens that will be distributed over a period of two years. Yeah, okay. uh, after, which, after which the incentives will stop. Hopefully by then the ecosystem is large enough um, and uh, you know, the value of voting for the frame the node would become uh, you know, evident and you wouldn't need further incentives. Because we want, we also want to reduce inflation as much as possible. So we would do, we, we don't want to keep continuous incentivization. Yeah. Uh, in in that sense. Yeah. Because you mentioned protocol on liquidity. Now I'll come back to that. Uh, so are these the only distribution method methods? Have we covered everything, or is there uh, any other way um, that is going to be incentivized where uh, the frames token the frame token is distributed? No, that, it, it's basically through minting, partnerships, uh, incentivizing voters, and then obviously the initial uh, liquidity that's going to be uh, to bootstrap the liquidity pools. So that's also coming from the no, uh, from the uh, framed reserve. Sorry. Yep. And after that, it's just mints, future mints. Okay, great. Cool. So that, that establishes that. Then the next thing I wanted to talk through is, okay, as a token holder, like forget uh, I don't have any NFTs, right? I just want to look at it as I've gone and put some, oh, actually, that's a terrible idea. I bought 10 Yeti strong NFTs, okay? And now I'm reaping the rewards of um, the the ratio that I'm earned frame tokens. And two, you mentioned I, the first year will also earn one frame a day. Is that correct? Correct. Excellent. Okay, so I'm earning my frame tokens. Why am I holding it? Uh, what What's the utility around it? Okay, so what, what's interesting about the whole concept that we're creating, we call it ArtFi. Um, the idea is, it, you, you've gone through the white paper, obviously, and mm. the problem that we see with the NFT space today is NFT projects are siloed. And this is something we discussed internally quite a lot. Um, there isn't, if you look at DeFi, and, and we do talk about this in, in the white paper, mm. if you invest in one DeFi protocol on a certain chain, they're built to work together and complement yeah. each other. It's not the case in, in the NFT space. Projects are usually siloed, separate. There isn't any kind of utility. And it's understandable because some of the projects are just art. And the utility of art is limited compared to, for example, a concept like DeFi or, or DeFi. Mm -hmm. token. 
However, if you do combine all different NFT collections under one economy, then you're creating this utility for, for the NFT projects themselves. How, and, and this is where the value of the frame token is. That frame token is, is what's driving this entire ecosystem and this entire economy. Because the token model is based on rewarding an engaged community. So the more engaged the community, uh, the more secondary sales that happen on in, within the ecosystem, the more passive income that stakers, frame stakers, would earn. So the main uh, attraction of the, what, the main thing that makes the frame token attractive is the ability to stake it and earn passive income. Okay. And that passive income will come from uh, node rewards. So mm -hmm. a portion of the node rewards would be going to the stakers and a percentage of the ecosystem earnings. That includes secondary sales. And uh, for example, we know we, we announced that we're working on a trading card game. Mm -hmm. So that trading card game is, is basically going to have elements of GameFi. It's going to be play to earn, player versus player, player versus mm -hmm. AI. It's going to have different modes and you, will, you can earn from that. And the revenue generated by the game is also going to be shared in part with the with the stakers themselves, so there is benefit of holding the frame token. Um, and it, it it will also have utility, but we, we can discuss this. Uh, yeah, I, I've actually I don't know if this has um, come up, but I've is is it showing the the white paper? Um, no, I cannot see it. No, you say. Oh, I know why. Give me a sec. I can fix that and. Here we go. How's that? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Okay. So uh, I thought maybe this this will help um, visualize some of the stuff we're talking about as well in case people are watching it on YouTube. So uh, one thing I wanted clarity on, you mentioned frame stakers. So obviously one of my big things was uh, I've got this frame token now. Why shouldn't I just sell it? Well, as you've just called out, there's incentives built into the tokenomics to for once I get this to stake it. So when I'm staking, is that different? Am I earning different rewards to voting with my ICX? Yes. So when you vote with your ICX, you're earning the um, voter rewards, mm -hmm. the ones that you usually, you know, when you vote for any peer up that you get. I think they're around 7% now, if I'm not yep, mistaken. Yep. Yeah. And then on top of that, um, a certain percentage of the node rewards that are attributed to the treasury will go to the stakers, plus what we said, the 50% of secondary sales um, from the framed uh, NFTs and uh, a percentage of the other earnings like from the TCG, for example. But we did not announce this yet because we're still working on the, the TCG is still basically an early development. So we can't announce any numbers as of yet. No, that's fair enough. Okay, so so then okay, I have this here now. The other, I'm, few... I'm going to interrupt you. I'm going to add yes. one more thing, if you don't mind. Uh, we mentioned we mentioned protocol owned liquidity. Um, yep. The there is benefit to holding framed long term because the system is designed to ensure, in a sense, constant buy pressure on the frame token, and that's coming from the node rewards. And that's coming from the secondary sales, um, obviously users buying the token itself. And we do have a tax system, which mm -hmm. I'm sure you might, you might ask about in the later. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> we keep, we keep that later. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I just thought maybe it will be um, just running through. Because when I look at this flow chart, there's a lot happening. And I think um, if uh, we'll talk through, so even if you're not l l listening to it or watching it on YouTube, you'll still be able to follow and that's what I've tried to structure my questions around. So coming back to it, at the moment, how, let's talk about the protocol owned liquidity. Okay, so you've mentioned treasury, we've mentioned taxing. So first of all, what is different? Why are we going down the protocol owned liquidity path? Well, for obvious reasons, this is what, uh, you know, this is what even, is, this is what's happening in DeFi. And there is, um, because we're in it for we're also in it for the long term. You know, this the, the token economy is built to be sustainable. Uh, the more, the, the uh, you know, well into the future. Um, and POL is also we think very attractive to users because it removes all risk of impermanent loss. 
Plus, it also removes the risk from the protocol itself. I mean, if you suddenly have a crash and people withdraw liquidity, then you're going to have, uh, you know, uh, liquidity issue, mercenary capital. I'm sure if you're familiar with the concept. Yeah. Uh, so it, it avoids all of these things and it ensures uh, constant value. And over time, the, the frame token will become very liquid, uh, which is advantageous to the protocol itself and to the token holders, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So... And how is this protocol earned? Because we know Karma Dow coming out with, you know, essentially issuing bonds at a cheaper rate so people can discount, et cetera. But this is not the path Yola going down. Uh, Yola, from what I have looked at and understood, Yola kind of utilizing the various aspects of the Icon ecosystem to, yeah. uh, to incentivize and bootstrap your protocol owned liquidity, where yeah. one is the no rewards, but then you've. I read about this unique taxing feature. Could you could you talk about what this taxing feature is? Should people be panicking? Um, and how does it help the protocol own liquidity? Protocol mm -hmm. liquidity. Yep. Yeah, sure. Um, what you said is very accurate. We published a medium article today, as a matter of fact, and uh, in it we mentioned that one of the reasons why we ch select we chose Icon to build on is because of the ICON tokenomics that are a good fit to what we're trying to build. Mm -hmm. Because we are leveraging certain aspects of the ICON ecosystem in order, yes, to, to promote this protocol-owned liquidity model and build it over time. The tax is part of that. Uh, as you know, node rewards are not constant and you never know what may happen in the future. People may not vote for you. People may withdraw votes. Uh, maybe, I don't know, the ICON blockchain might decide to stop rewards altogether. We never know what may happen in the future. So we wanted to ensure that there are other um, uh, systems in place to keep adding liquidity to the pool and keep feeding the treasury at the same time. So that's where the concept of the tax came from. And happened, you know, a, a lot of discussions went into this and uh, a lot of people, a lot of help. Uh, we did get, you know, a lot of advice from advisors. Mm. Um, and, uh, the idea of the tax is that uh, we, we're, we're obviously collecting tax in the form of framed. So every time you're buying something, a user, uh, there's a buy tax, which is fixed at 2%. Mm -hmm. and the sell tax is uh, initially it's going to be set at 8%. And then we're going to make the sell tax variable. So it will vary depending on the uh, frame price. The, 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 the general concept is when the frame price is high, the selling tax would be decreased a little bit because we understand that many users might want to sell for profit. Uh, and then when it's when the frame price drops, we would increase the sell price to the maximum, which is 8%. It will never exceed 8%. Um, the, the earnings from the tax and the liquidity pool fees will collect together, and then 75% of those are deposited back into the liquidity pool. And 25% of that tax is added to the treasury. Now, the, 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 the other indirect, uh, if, you want, if you will, the effect of the selling tax is that it mitigates to some degree the selling pressure that may happen on the pool because you're, you're, taking, away, you're taking away as tax 8% of those frame tokens. Hmm. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, but, but from, yeah, it, it does, but it's going into a large chunk of it is going into the treasury. So 25 the, the, the majority is going into the pool, back into the pool, actually. Okay, so into the um, uh, protocol on liquidity, as in into the LP pool. Correct. Okay, okay, I'll pause there. Now, let's talk about the treasury. What is this? So um, we want to have a treasury system in, uh, in place because, uh, for many reasons. First of all, the treasury is, um, the purpose of it is that we are going to use it for, um, as a, it's going to back framed in the event of, let's say, I don't know, something happens, there's a protocol breach, uh, I don't know, the balance gets hacked, whatever may happen. So we do have, um, uh, we're sure that's not going to happen, but, you know, it's good to have a treasury for, for situations like this. Furthermore, as the treasury builds, we can use that to uh, promote the protocol's growth itself. Hmm. Uh, we might even fund partner projects uh, if we find there's potential in that. Um, so, and, and then a percentage of the treasury is also going to be used uh, to 
specifically 1% of the treasury holdings will be paid to the pool every month. So initially that 1% is not pa paid uh, to the pool as in the liquidity pool. As in, yes, uh, as an added add as liquidity to the pool. So initially that 1% may not be much, but when we ran the models over time, over a few years, it actually becomes a significant amount. Cool. And and I, I recall reading in the white paper as well, the way you'll, the goal is to not put, from a team's perspective, not put any sell pressure on the token. So in this case, your LP pools will kind of, with the taxes, then you'll pair it with the node rewards there and not actually selling exactly. against the L pool. Yeah. The tax that we collected, that we collect, is not sold to the pool. It will be paired from a percentage of the secondary sales or the treasury or the node rewards themselves. Yeah. So okay. The only sell pressure that comes is from people selling the token. And even then, that's mitigated slightly by the sell tax. Whereas you have users buying and you have a percentage of the secondary sales going into the pool a percentage of the treasury going into the pool and a percentage of the node reward going into the pool. So that's all buy pressure in a sense. So yeah. over time, it goes back to the first question you asked. So over time, the frame token uh, is set to appreciate in value. So there's value in holding it long term. Yeah, cool. And, and the treasury, so we got 1% going, but then a percentage of the treasury also goes to the stakers, right? Correct. So this is no, not, not, not a, no, sorry, not a percentage of the treasury, a percentage of the node rewards that are basically going into the treasury. So the node rewards are split between the treasury and the pool of the share of the treasury of, of the treasury's share. Sorry, uh, part of that is going to the stakers, specifically thirty percent. This yes. graph, uh, I understand, this graph may 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 make it a little bit confusing. So how much percent? Sorry, Andy, did you 30%, say? 30%. 30% of the node rewards is going to the stakers. 30% of the treasury's share. So the treasury. 50 yeah, yeah, so basically 30% yep. of okay. that 50% going into the treasury. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. That makes sense. Yep. Um, cool. Okay. I think that covers, because uh, again, uh, that's why I wanted to work through it. Um, so overall, all the selling and buying. So use, wait, let's start again. Users will get framed. The only way they're going to get framed is by uh, buying, oh no, by buying the collections or partners or things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and they get per ICX with the Eddie Strong Club, they'll get per for the first year, they'll get frame tokens. Then uh, they're getting it for free. Then they can stake it because then they're going to get a revenue share of the node rewards and basically the selling and buying that happens. The entire ecosystem is designed with one sole purpose is to incentivize the stakers to get rewarded more. Correct. Simply put. So if, if the flowchart's too confusing for everyone, but it's not confusing, it's trying to articulate a lot, but the end goal is this, that if you stake the free frame tokens you get from buying the NFTs, to put quite simply, the entire system is designed to keep rewarding its takers. So, yes, there's a sales tax, but it's tokens you've gotten for free, and the taxing mechanisms ensure that, uh, in my eyes, I always see, I like the taxing model, Andy, you know that, and um, what, what I like about it is it incentivizes a floor price at some point. So. Um, at the end of the day, if there's a mass exodus of selling just because people are cashing out profits or something they got free, that tax is constantly building into the LP pool or the treasury? Both. Both. Bingo. What a good answer. And and indirectly, all of a sudden, at some point, even in a bear market, it doesn't matter. As long as the collection's growing, NFTs are selling, the system's working, no rewards are feeding in. That staking reward, if too many people sell, all of a sudden starts to climb. So if it was 10% and there's a mass, you know, shift in, uh, you know, people just taking profits, those taxes and eventually will start leading to, well, that AP, APR, APY, however you want to look at it, let's say APR so you can work per day, starts to go from 10, 11, 12 based on all of that. So um, it's a really cool system uh, and very excited to see it in action. One more thing I want to add. I missed this. Um, the, the treasury is set to pay out a percentage by design. Uh, yeah. this, is, this is because um, eventually, let's say node rewards do decrease what this, what, or, or increase. What this does is that 
the treasury will get to a point where it will just plateau. Yeah. So so explain that to me. I haven't followed that bit. What, what do yeah, you mean so, by plateau? Is it because the treasury is too big or not earning exactly, more? So, not- so you're, you're paying out a percentage on a monthly basis out of the treasury into the liquidity. Pool. So you're adding that as liquidity into the pool. Yeah. As the treasury builds, that percentage value increases month month on month. Yeah. Eventually, it's, it'll get to a point where the net monthly income is equal to the net monthly outflow that you're that you're depositing into the pool. When that when that is reached, the treasury ca- caps basically. It gets to a point where it stops increasing. Yeah. Uh, now, but, but, hmm. Yeah. Now. To, to, the, the way it's set up now is that uh, the way we've modeled it is that it won't cap even seven years into the future and beyond that even. So you get to a point where the treasury um, is, 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 uh, is full in a sense, and then it would be, um, you, you still have that system working. So you yeah. still have monthly payouts into the pool. And then even if let's say the, the node rewards decrease uh, and this, or, or the tax decreases, um, as that happens, the treasury will, yes, it is true that at some point the treasury payout might be less than the what's going into the treasury, but then it gets to a point where it reaches that equilibrium again. So it's set up in a way that the treasury will never run out of um, funds. It will always have funds in it. Yep. Okay, cool. If that makes sense, yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. Sounds good. Okay, so uh, I think that's tackled a lot of it. Now, what I wanted to do is spend a bit of time, well, give you, your team, a bit of time to talk elevator pitch for partnerships. So obviously you want to expand, uh, not just have in-house projects, you kind of want want to encourage projects that uh, have got a long-term view and want to be part of a bigger ecosystem and everything you have described now. Uh, what what would you say to them? Why join Framed? Oh, Does wait, anyone... Andy, before before you go, welcome, yeah. Jeff. Jeff, welcome. Hello, thanks for thanks for having me. I've uh, just logged on after my appointment. Yep, no, no, I appreciate that, man. Um, yes, so okay, back back to it. Let, let's keep keep this flow going. What what was the question I asked, Andy? You you were asking about partnerships. Yes, hit me. Yeah. So, uh, does anyone want to take this, or do you want me to answer? I feel like I don't want to. Yep. I don't want to do too much. You're, you're, on, you're on a roll. You're on a roll, Andy. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, you're on roll. Keep going. Okay. So we, uh, as we said, the whole concept of what we're calling ArtFi is um, creating this extensive ecosystem. It, it is. It is an even framed ecosystem because we are looking for partnerships and partner collections that will join this shared economy. So the advantage is the more the ecosystem grows, that those tokenomics in the background are, are also, you know, they get amplified with time. So mm. users benefit more. The more, sec- the more collections you have, uh, the, more, the more collections that take part in the model, the more secondary sales uh, that happen in the background, the more uh, passive income that stakers uh, receive. In that sense, uh, that, that's 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 one thing. But then, what a partnership does is it always expands the community. So whenever you partner with a new project, you're always bringing in new people to your ecosystem. So the benefit to the existing framed ecosystem is that you're getting new users on board. Uh, you're expanding, you're, you know, you're expanding your your user base, and then the benefit for uh, partnering projects is that they get access to the entire ecosystem that we've built. So by buying by 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 buying an NFT and receiving frame rewards, those frame rewards once staked will give them entry to that entire ecosystem that's going on in the background, in terms of secondary sales, uh, no shares, etc. Yeah, so a user perspective: uh, if you've got someone who's right into uh, the Wonder Game, Wonder Game, uh, yeah, just as an example, then. Um, they come in and buy uh, Yeti Strong Club, then they're getting the frame tokens. And if they're staked, all of a sudden they are benefiting if Wonder Game is a partner in that sense. They're benefiting from the selling that that's part of the partnership because um, percentage 
do we want to touch on that? So, so percentage of the resales, and and that's how the partnerships are negotiated, right? Uh, they get right. the frame token, maybe a little bit of mint, depending on each scenario, and resales go then to the frame stakers. Um, so overall, what's happening here is you've got uh, everyone benefiting from all these various communities via the frame token. Correct. Well, what I like about this the most, um, I'm biased, but what I do like this about this the most is that the system is designed to put pressure, for lack of a better term, on, on everyone involved. So creators are you know, incentivized to keep creating new collections and new utility for existing collections, for example, or expansions. The community is incentivized to uh, be engaged and promote and you know, shill, connect, bring in new community members. Because mm. the more active the ecosystem, the more everyone else, the more everyone benefits. So creators benefit. They keep you know selling new collections, or you know they benefit from whatever expansion or utility they they create for their collections. And then the community, um, the, the the basis for any you know successful NFT project is the community. As Andrew said at the beginning, mm. this is this is central to everything. So. Again, this went into the design of the token model. How can we ensure that the community, a passionate community, is rewarded for that? Yeah. You know, is there... the... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I was just thinking, like, as you were talking, so is there plans to, like, a little bit, because I know there's 32 million, and uh, what, what kind of inflation is there to be expected percentage-wise annually post this, the 32 this, million? This is this is why we we went for the distribution to be basically a function of ICX value. We believe in, 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 in ICON and the ICON, you know, the value of the ICON token over time. We believe in what ICON is trying to build uh, BTP in terms of BTP and everything else. So over time, we, we, in, we, we imagine a scenario where the ICON token appreciates in value. Mm -hmm. What that means is that the initial price of an NFT would, would be lower. So the more the more expensive ICX, the lower the price in terms of ICX of a new mint. So let's say uh, let's say a, a ICX is worth five dollars or ten dollars. Pricing a new mint or a new NFT, uh, you know, at two hundred would be very expensive. So that would be two thousand dollars worth of you know worth of money for 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 a certain uh, NFT. So as ICX appreciates in value, the starting mint price is expected to be lower. For a new collection. For a new collection, exactly. And mm. the distribution ratio is set as a function of ICX. So the way the way we look at it, that 32 million um, won't be reached for quite some time. But when it is reached, at that point, new collections, yes, will inflate the total supply. Whether it's a, and that, whether it's a that obviously collection would or be, a new collection. Yeah, and that would be negotiated on... Um, Per new collection, as you're saying, yeah. So Correct. it may not necessarily be once we've hit that supply. It uh, it would be 0.7 part five. You know, um, it, it, it could be adjusted dramatically um, based on the value of framed as well itself. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, I know, Andy. You've been doing a lot of talking. Andrew, Jeff, is there anything you want to get off your chest? Uh, no, I, nothing. Sorry, I was, nothing. From, from, from. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, no, nothing on my end. Is uh, Andy? Andy's uh, explained it quite well. From obviously, I've come in at the the back end of it. Um, but yeah, obviously, the the community, as Andrew said, is obviously um, pivotal to to framed and. Um, everything we do is um, to try and help grow the community, um, which is obviously why we've come onto Icon to do this um, 10K yep. collection. So we're yep. yeah looking looking forward to it, and um, hopefully I'll be able to bring over some people from the TCG uh, metaverse and um, bring them over to the Craft Network. Yeah, awesome. I do want to add the adding adding lasting value to an NFT collection and adding utility is extremely difficult. It, it, it does require, you know, almost a development. It does require a development team behind you. And, oh, yeah. and, a, lot of, and a lot of artists, they're just artists. They, they, they may have development experience, but generally they don't. And to come out with utility with artwork is extremely difficult. 
And yeah. and the, the advantages of, of our model, I guess, is you know those collections who don't have that experience with development and added utility, they can just for free almost just join our team or join our ecosystem rather, um, and then have that access to the Frank token, and then that, that then makes their minting collection so much more valuable because mm. you know users are able to get framed with their collection and. And they don't really have to do anything. They just have to, say, just have to agree on a few um, terms and conditions with us. <laughs> but but really, they don't have to really do anything. They just um, they get onboarded and they benefit directly with having um, framed as part of that collection. Yeah, no, <laughs> understand. Okay, look, I, I think I wanted. I didn't want to get too uh, too much there. I think that really helped break down everything you saw on the chart um, and basically what Framed is trying to do. I totally agree with what you're saying, Andrew. There, there's a lot of great NFT collections out there and some of them just do not have the contacts. I don't even know where to get started to kind of add that next level of utility. And uh, this is where Frame kind of comes in where they already have an is, is this existing um user base, let's say, uh, and by introducing this tokenomics, they get exposure to everyone who's bought into frame, but at the same time, it gives them an added layer of utility. So I think it's it's brilliant. I think it's a fine juggling act as well, where the team will definitely need to scan and really understand the projects they're partnering with to ensure, um, you know, yeah, there are scenarios of, I actually didn't know this, but apparently deep fake arts, deep ape arts or whatever, whoever minted, they did a ghosting, I was I was told by someone. So um, we don't want scenarios like that impacting frame. So have you all given thought about your vetting process on how you're going to pick who you want to partner with? Because I, I can I can personally see a lot of teams going, hang on a second, this is brilliant. We don't have the skill sets for this. This is a brilliant tokenomics <laughs> model. I want in. Yeah, I look, to be honest, We've got a lot of a lot on our plate with the, the Yeti Club, Tom's collection that's coming out, and the TCG. So at the minute, we're not actively going to go out and seek partnerships. Um, but obviously, once it comes out and people start realising the benefit of it, they definitely, hopefully, um, will, will come to us. And yeah. it, to be honest, as a team, we haven't really sat down and, and really um, nutted that out yet. Yeah, um, yeah. As, as an advisor, Fez, on our team, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that you could help us with that as well. Um, <laughs> put your foot in it. Now. Um, but yeah, we're we're definitely, obviously, it's definitely needed. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's something that we'll have to um, think about definitely. That excellent, excellent. Okay, I think uh, we've just got someone else joining us. I'm going to let him in. Tom, welcome. Hey, hey, video as Hello. well. Bonus. Hello, start. how's it going? Good, good. Let me stop sharing this screen and um, yeah. let's get us front and centre. There we go. Cool. Um, okay, Tom. Hey, since since you've just joined, uh, what's going on? Do you want to do you want to intro who you are, um, what you do for Framed? Yeah, sure. Um, so my name's Tom. Um, I'm an animator and cartoonist and. I met the Frame Boys uh, through mutual friends. Um, I originally entered one of the Wonderland competitions, and uh, one of my mates, Brian from um, Pig Scows, um, ended up hooking me up with the Frame Boys, and yeah, here we are. Awesome. Okay, short and sweet, and and another Aussie, obviously. Um, yeah. So great, great. We're slowly taking over now. Andy, have you thought about you know migrating to Australia so that we can slowly conquer Icon? <laughs> and de declare Icon the Australian nation. <laughs> they're, trying, they're trying to get me there, yeah. yeah I've got to say, I've got to say, Tom, I haven't seen you in person. You look exactly like Andy from, from my vantage point. <laughs> just, Andy, you just need the mo, and you guys will be brothers. <laughs> uh, Very similar look. I was watching this movie, I forget, I think it was one of the Star Trek movies, and it was Jim Kirk's birthday. Uh, and the doctor, I forget the name. Uh, so he said, here's a full set of hair and perfect eyesight. I, I <laughs> and then I thought to myself, well, at least I have 50% going for me. <laughs> uh, cool, cool. Uh, yeah. I was going to say, Tom is behind the, the Tom Toons collection that is, is getting really popular. And I will soon be announcing more uh, 
partnerships with Wonder Game with that one set's organised. Yeah, those have been fantastic. Every time I see a new one, I actually uh, I stop, I take it in. I'm like, oh, th- these are great. And I don't even try to, honestly, I don't even try to buy. They're gone instantly, aren't they? Every time we, it's released yeah. for that. We, we definitely sell them too cheap. So I think the next one's going to be more expensive. So, so you, you, you've lost out, Chaz. You could okay. have got one a lot cheaper. <laughs> I, I should have negotiated advisor deals around this. Damn it. Um, no, I'm kidding. So... <laughs> Will will this collection benefit from Framed? Yes. Can we cover that? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. What, what about the Wales collection, the original, the OG, the first? Yeah, so we had a, a Discord-only exclusive where all previous collections will have a Framed token airdropped to the owners, the original, the originals, and anyone who um, bought it on the secondary market as well. Oh, okay. So so with the secondary, okay, this is interesting. It's just the, a one, one-off. Okay. For our, for our so, um, past collections, yeah. Okay, so it's like a super bonus. So, yet, like, for example, the Yeti Strong, the secondary sales won't benefit from any um, frame tokens. So it's mm-hmm. literally anyone who has supported you guys in the past. Correct. Uh, that, this is kind of your Uniswap moment. You, I'm, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to own a couple of wins, so that's good. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Um, cool, cool. Okay, uh, is there now... Is there anything you'll have in dish that you'll have saved for Iron Icon? <sighs> Silence. Yeah. I can feel it. There's so, no, there's, there's just we so do much. We, we observe a lot of our, our alpha drops for our Discord AMAs that we had last night. Oh, if, I, know, I know you dropped in for like a brief moment, um, but if you guys do want to check out lots of alpha and join the Discord, we dropped a lot of TCG Alpha last night. Look, for the record, I had a meeting. That's why I dropped yeah. out. That's, uh, <laughs> but that's why I was in there to show support. And then I had to go, believe it or not, icon related meeting. So um, I had to jump into that. But while I'm here as well, competitions, raffles, there's so much happening. Do you want to, tomorrow, this is going to drop literally tomorrow morning. I'm going to drop this episode. So, in light of that, do you want to cover off what you've got running at the moment, just in case? Well, we'll make sure they get to the end of the podcast so that they can well, mm. go apply, subscribe, share, do whatever they need to to qualify for a giveaway. Oh, yeah, we, we do have a uh, best thread competition happening. Mm-hmm. So the community member who writes the uh, best thread on anything anything that's in the white paper, it can be mm-hmm. the token model or just the you know any any content that's within the white paper um, that closes on Thursday. So they have time to uh, take part in that. And we do have the daily giveaways that are happening uh, on Discord. I think uh, it's called One Yeti a Day Keeps the FOMO Away. Is it, jo- Jeff? Yeah, Yeti a Day Keeps the FOMO Away. Um, yeah, something something I came up walking the dog, to be honest. So, um, t- tell me more, uh, because I'm sure I can win this. So what, what do I need to do? Uh, so basically in the giveaway section on the Discord, um, you just need to click on the little party icon. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's been gone the last two days. I think we've only um, had about sixty-five people uh, competing at the both days, so it's still, um, yeah, still a pretty good chance to win. I think there's only about fifty odd, and it closes in an hour or so. So if you want to get get on oh, and um, submit your entry, um, all you need to do is yeah, just click the icon and um, you're you're in the the giveaway. Pretty okay, simple. Well, looks like I got to jump off this call, guys. Other random, <laughs> random <laughs> related. Yeah, we, we, okay. also did a, we also did a giveaway um, to the poker tournament that was that happened a couple of weeks ago as well, um, which we'll we'll give to the winners once we once we mint once we start minting. And the the people who were part of the AMA last night, um, we dropped um, the fact that they'll get some. So we'll have to organise one for you first since you came in at um, oh, one thank stage. You. Yes, I, yes, hello, Chocobo was telling me how he scored a Yeti and I was in shock and quote quizzed yeah. him and he mentioned the AMA. I was like, hang on a second. Uh, we'll definitely <laughs> make sure that you get one. Yeah. First gets like a 10% like, screenshot of one. <laughs> well, look, you know what? I, I realize we've spent a lot of time in this podcast. We've talked about all kinds of things, but really revolved it around the white paper. I haven't really quizzed you about the Yeti Strong Club collection. So, care to dish the collection of 10,000 rarities? What, what's, what's, what, what's 
everything driving the collection. I want to know all about it. So the genius behind it is um, one of Tom's uh, mates who's also mates with um, Brian and then uh, Brian um, hooked Andy and I um, up with him and then we started uh, speaking to him and, um, yeah, the, the idea of the Yetis um, came. It was something that he was working on. He just needed a, a team to work with, to obviously, um, Andrew to develop and um, me just to do the shilling sort of side of it. And then, um, yeah, it just it all really came together. Um, the number, the number. I think we were originally something like five thousand five hundred nineteen or something was the original number we decided on, and then um, we thought we'd try the ten thousand. So, um, yeah. so and and is it uh, as it mints? Then when the collection is completely minted, then people will know who's got the rarest of of the Yetis. Is that is that how it's going to work? Is there going to be stats associated to it or anything like that? Yeah. Well, the, the good timing was craft I'm uh, introducing the uh, percentage on um, of the rarity traits uh, mm-hmm. that's just happened a couple of days ago so uh, once once we mint we will connect um, to craft and then that should sure then um, provide those with you know this this trait five percent um, have this trait or 0.15 percent have this trait and then we'll partner with our rarity hunter and icon to be able to um, showcase our Yetis on on a rarity um, leaderboard, I guess, so people will be able to rank the Yetis they own against traits of other of other Yetis. Yep, we yep. we probably at last count we probably have over 160 traits um, across across the whole collection um, and f- across four tribes as well. So um, there's a lot of variety. It's a lot of variety. It's a lot of a lot of cool ones. I love I love generating them. They're really cool on my screen. Cool, cool. Jeff, were you trying to say something? Uh, no, no, no. Okay. Okay, cool. No, that that's good. That, I'm glad I didn't forget to quiz you around that. I mean, I, I tend to see tokenomics and then it's like, ooh, tell me more. Um, <laughs> and I forget about everything else. So, no, look, great, guys. I think that's covered a fair bit. We're uh, closing in on an hour. Is there any closing comments? Yeah, I just want to say that the, the white paper is is relatively heavy. There's a lot in there. Um, there's a lot of good information in there, but feel free to come in our slide into our DMs or or come onto Discord. We've got a AMA kind of section. You can just ask us anything. If if you don't quite understand something or you want some clarity, just just let us know. Um, we're, we're happy to discuss it because you know we we have, we're open to feedback. We're open to to change something if if we deem oh yeah that's a good point actually we we might we may revisit it. So yeah, just come come with us. Nothing is set in stone. Cool. No, good to hear. Good to hear. Um, so join Discord for – actually, Andy, I'll get you to send me a Discord invite link so we can put it in the show notes. Join it. Daily competitions if you want to win a Yeti. I, I didn't know about this. I don't know how, even though I've been following stuff. Um, and, yeah, suggestions Thanks, open. If, if you want revisions in the white paper, just just give all your ideas and Andy will make changes. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> yeah, kidding. Yeah. Uh, a lot of research has got into it, so obviously, um, yeah, it, you're going to have to come come up with something good uh, and viable for changes to be implemented. But um, good to hear, Andrew. You, you want community feedback? Okay, well, yeah, that, I mean that's who we are. That's what we want to be is a community driven, um, you know, team. So we're always open to making it better. Yeah, no, love it. Okay, cool. Look, um, as always, just disclaimers, not financial advice. Uh, this this podcast is all about, you know, getting our builders on to come on and share what they're doing, what they're building, and, and kind of what the goal of the projects are. And uh, this, is, this has been great. I've learned a ton about Frame. I read that white paper before the show. I drilled some questions and... Um, but just having you talk through it and, you know, really drilling you while you talk, wait, what do you mean by that? And it really helps me personally and I'm, I'm sure it helps everyone listening as well. Well, I hope I shouldn't be so confident. I hope it helps everyone listening as well. But, guys, thanks, everyone. So, so I know um, from all different time zones joining, really appreciate everyone coming on the show. Um, like, share, subscribe. Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys.